Robin, through much of my life, I've tried to approach reality by asking whether God exists. And I've realized that there are even more fundamental questions that you can ask about how everything is structured. One of them is, is causation. We, we take it for granted. But the more you look at physics, the more you see problems with causation. Uh, as a philosopher, how do you look at this concept of causation? Okay, so causation at, at, at one point uh, was not liked by, by philosophers. Uh, Bertrand Russell uh, famously uh, said that uh, uh, scientists don't talk about causation for a very good reason. There is no such thing. Uh, I Why think did the pendulum. Uh, his his view was that we should uh, talk in, in, in instead about law, laws of nature, and he thinks of laws of nature in, ter in, in human terms essentially as as, as, as regularities, mm. rather than as sort of individual powers that uh, have effects at specific uh, places. Now, I, I, I must say I, I believe in causation because I see its effects uh, every day. I, I don't think uh, causation can just be reduced to uh, regularities. Philosophers have off, tried to offer uh, different analyses of, of, of what causation is. So the, the, the idea behind each of these is that causation is a problematic concept. We need to explain it in terms of something that we're more familiar with. So can we explain causation in terms of regularities in nature? Can we explain a causation in terms of probability that mm -hmm. causes make their effects more probable? Can we explain it in terms of counterfactuals uh, that if, um, if I hadn't thrown my cigarette butt onto the, uh, the, the pool of petrol, there wouldn't have been an explosion of that, that sort. Uh, my own view is that none of these uh, analyses is entirely uh, uh, workable, uh, because one thing that an account of causation uh, must do is to explain its asymmetry, that if A causes B, B does not cause A. And the trouble with most of the proposed analyses of causation is that they don't explain that asymmetry. So I'm tempted by the view that causation is a primitive concept. And what I mean by that is it's something that can't be explained in terms of, uh, of other concepts. Uh, rather, other concepts are to be explained in terms of causation. Just so I understand that, what else would be in that category? What other concepts of reality would be primitive such that it cannot be explained in terms of anything else? You have causation. Is there anything else? There, there, there are many things that could be uh, uh, candidates for, 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 for primitive concepts. Uh, the notion of truth might be a, a, okay. a, a primitive concept. Uh, the notion of necessity uh, might be a, a, a primitive concept. So the question is, when anyone proposes that something is, is unanalyzable, it can't be explained in terms of other things, whether it itself is capable of doing serious explanatory work mm -hmm. that can't be done by, by anything else. Uh, I believe causation can do that. I think uh, uh, features of causation can explain uh, features that we commonly attribute to time, for example. Uh, how would that work? Well, the uh, one defining feature of time is its direction. It runs from mm. earlier to later. Uh, so, so what is the difference between earlier and later? I think it's a causal difference. I think what we call earlier uh, uh, is defined in causal terms. I think it's uh, true that uh, causes occur earlier than their effects, not simply uh, accidentally, uh, but because that's what the earlier than relation is. It's essentially a causal relation. And from a physics point of view, uh, time, it's a mystery why time is not symmetrical. And that's a big problem. So you're saying that the nature of causation as a primitive concept can actually actually set the direction of time. I think it, I think it can set the direction of time, and I, I think other explanations that have been uh, referred to in physics, for example, like uh, we can define the direction of time in terms of increasing entropy, uh, don't work because the very disorder notion in the universe. Well, increasing disorder of the universe, um, because to say that entropy increases is already to help yourself to the idea of the the arrow of time, mm, mm. Uh, and, and that's not a good way of of, of defining it. Some physicists actually bring in backward causation, where something in the future uh, can cause something in the past. And this seems to be 
fairly standard in quantum physics on the extreme micro level, and he, some physicists even speculate that it could be true for universal history in some very strange way that things at a, a future time can, through the, um, the, the, the different histories, the back histories, could self-select on a backwards basis among the histories of, uh, of, 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 the, of the quantum universe. Does any of that make philosophical sense? Well, it doesn't make philosophical sense if you define uh, the direction of time in terms of the direction of causation. Now, that, that would be backwards causation would be ruled out uh, a priori. If, if by definition causes occur earlier than effects, you can't... Which you is can't your predict. definition. It is, it is my definition because so. I think that explains the experience of time. If there could be backwards causation, uh, it's odd that we can't uh, see the future. Uh, we can only perceive the, 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 the recent past. Well, backwards causation in the quantum world seems to be uh, uh, experimentally verified. Does that trouble you? Does that undercut your whole philosophical system? It certainly would, if it's genuine causation <laughs> rather than certain kinds of I, I, uh, patterns. I'd be very pleased and amazed to see a philosopher change their mind. That'd be terrific. Oh, well, philosophers are always changing their mind. And it, there's it's no reason, in incidentally, why a philosophical uh, thesis uh, shouldn't be falsified uh, mm. by empirical research. Mm. Mm. Uh, I, d I don't think uh, philosophy is entirely insulated from, mm. uh, from science well, in that way. Well, well that, that's very good. Um, how important then is causation is, if you build philosophical schemes? Can you just assume it's there or do you have to enrich it in certain ways? Well, uh, I suggested that uh, uh, causation is a, is a primitive concept. So uh, one uh, may explain what other phenomena it's, it's connected with, what things you might define in terms of it, but you're not going to, to analyze it in terms of something else, so that it is something that's absolutely bedrock in your, your conception of reality.